way for the Hartford County woman killed in a panhandling roost last weekend. Jacqueline Smith died after giving cash to what appeared to be a mom desperate to feed her baby and when an accomplice robbed and then stabbed her. Um, she had a sign and she, asked, she was asking for help because she had a baby. And um, I was in the back seat, so I wasn't really paying anything any mind until I seen um, someone actually approach the car. And then that's when, you know, it just all just happened so fast. We have new details about a Baltimore woman fatally stabbed after reportedly giving money to a panhandler. Police say it was actually staged by her family. Jackson, Jacqueline Smith's husband and stepdaughter have been charged with murder. And we are back with another one, my fellow true crime family. I am the mysterious Black Bandit, and let me welcome you on this journey through the most perplexing and mystifying cases on YouTube. You guys already know what I need you to do. Go ahead and, sorry, my bad, forgot. They told me to look you in the eyes when I say this. Go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on none of these videos when I upload. All right? <laughs> okay, in today's story, we have a major plot twist that had the whole world warning people to watch out for the homeless people asking for money. Now, you won't want to miss out on this one, so stop what you're doing, sit back, relax, if you can, and check this story out. On December 1st, 2018, around 12.30 in the morning, Keith Smith, his wife Jacqueline, and his daughter Valeria Smith were headed home after having been out celebrating that daughter's 28th birthday. While they were driving, they had come to a stop sign at the Johnson Square neighborhood in East Baltimore when Jacqueline spotted a homeless woman standing on the side of the road holding a sign that read, help me feed my baby, God bless, and carrying what looked like a baby wrapped in a blanket. At the time, it was cold and also drizzling, so Jacqueline felt sorry for the baby. So she tells Keith to pull over and roll down the window so she could give the woman some money to at least get some food for a child. Now, as Jacqueline was looking through a purse for some money to give the homeless woman, Keith noticed a homeless man standing there next to the woman, just watching, but he didn't think anything about it. Once Jacqueline found the money, she handed the woman the $10 bill, and the woman showed her appreciation by saying, God bless. But as the homeless woman was backing away, the homeless guy calmly walks over to her window, leans in, and says, thank you. Then out of nowhere, he begins stabbing her several times in the chest. As everyone was in the car screaming, he then snatches her necklace. Then the female woman snatches her purse from inside the car and they both ran off. Now Keith initially got out of the car and started to chase them, but with his wife bleeding profusely from the stab wound, he jumped back into the car and immediately called 911, then sped off to try to get her to the John Hopkins Hospital, which was a mile away. Once they made it to the hospital, the paramedics rushed her into a room to try to do whatever they could to save her life, but despite their best efforts, the doctors weren't able to save her and she was pronounced dead just before 1 a.m. Once the police arrived, they questioned Keith and his daughter to get a description and statement on what had just happened. So he told them the homeless woman was carrying what looked like a baby, but it must have just been a stuffed animal or something wrapped in a blanket. Then he described the female suspect as being in her 20s with a medium brown skin, a medium bill, about five feet tall, and wearing a long brown coat. And as far as the male suspect, he was a darker tone around five foot ten inches tall with a medium bill, a goatee, and wearing a black hoodie. This tragic story was broadcast all throughout the Baltimore local news station with the Metro Crime Stoppers offering a reward up to $2,000 for any information. This incident sparked a huge outrage. Just about everyone in the community that has had some kind of resentment towards panhandlers started to express their true feelings toward them. Standing across the street from one another with dueling signs. If you want money, go get a job and work for it. Downtown, we met Michael. I don't have people say, get that F off my face, uh, F you, you know, stuff like that, you know. Other than that, I don't look at it. I still say have a nice day and keep it moving. Soon, the public started blaming the Baltimore Police Department by suggesting that officers weren't enforcing the city's panhandling laws. Meanwhile, Keith went on several interviews speaking on the incident, telling the world about how him and his wife Jacqueline had been married for nearly five years and had six children and three grandchildren. I'm gonna let the world know my, my wife didn't die in vain. So I want to try to get a law passed against banning this, this epidemic of these people out here begging for money and getting close proximity of your car. Because I'm a tractor trailer driver and I see it everywhere I go. And some people get violent when you don't want to give. So 
something needs to be done because now you don't know whether or not you're going to give this person going to take your life or they're going to say thank you for it because this girl actually said god bless you when that guy did that so that's nothing you know now for a while this story didn't get much recognition but when oprah winfrey who was a local television anchor in baltimore tweeted i have done this thousands of times but will think twice before doing it ever again elevated this story to the attention of national audience now, the negative stereotype about the city of Baltimore helped contribute to the believability of the suspect's report, but with the spotlight, authorities started to look deeper into the content of Keith and his daughter's story, which showed some signs of fabrication. Jacqueline's family members stated that they had always been suspicious. They said Jacqueline would never put herself in harm's way, then asked the questions, what man would let the window down on their wife? And then why wouldn't he stump on the gas to get away as the person started to stab her? Then on top of that, in February of 2019, Keith sold all the belongings in Jacqueline's house and him and his daughter moved to Florida. Now, as the story started to change shapes from a random act of violence to one of domestic violence, investigators started to look more into Keith's background and found that he had a history of committing serious crimes for money. Back in September of 2000, he led police on a chase after being considered a suspect for a bank robber, then crashed into a patrol car, sending the officer to the hospital. Once he was arrested, police reports stated he admitted to robbing the same bank three times because he claimed his daughter had HIV and needed money to take care of her. This incident resulted in him serving six years in prison and was paroled out in 2007. Now, although Keith had this on his background, investigators still didn't have enough evidence to arrest him, but when they checked those cell phone signals, Keith and his daughter were toast. During the time of Jacqueline's murder, Keith's cell phone signal put his car in Druid Hill Park, a totally different location from where he claimed his wife was stabbed. Then, when they looked at the surveillance camera footage, his vehicle and the panhandlers were nowhere to be found. Keith had made everything up. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. You know, every day I wake up, I'm trying to wake up and say it didn't happen. But then when I notice that, it's a quiet calm in this house now. That, you know, it's, you can tell my wife's not here. Now, by the time all this was discovered, Keith and Valeria were already living in Florida, but they had made plans to leave the country. So the detectives reached out to the U.S. Marshals to get their help. On March 3rd, 2019, while Keith and his daughter were sitting in a gas station parking lot, the Texas police surrounded the car and placed them both under arrest about 20 miles from the Mexican border. Keith and his daughter were being held without bail on charges of murder, conspiracy, assault, and were to be extradited back to Maryland for their trial. Now, as the trial was underway, Valeria, who had agreed to testify against her father, charges were actually dropped to acting as an accessory. During the trial, she stated that she sat in the backseat of the car as her father drove them into a park while her stepmom was dozing off in the front passenger seat. Then she said, out of nowhere, he just started stabbing her and had blood all over his hands. And once he was done, he walked into the woods with the knife, but returned without it. Once he got back in the car, he coached her on the story they would tell the police about the panhandler and told her to get rid of Jacqueline's wallet to make the story more believable. Afterwards, he placed a towel over Jacqueline's head and calmly drove to East Baltimore where he called 911. Then she said, as soon as the dispatcher answered the phone, Keith started to pretend cry as he explained what allegedly happened. Now, Keith's attorney told the jury that just because there were inconsistencies in the story, it doesn't prove that he killed his wife. And also, you can't trust his daughter because at the time, she was strung out on drugs. In addition to that, when the Baltimore Police Crime Lab technician analyzed the swab collected from the car, clothing, and knife, the only DNA that was found on the knife was from his daughter, Valeria. Now, at first, the case seemed to be going pretty well for Keith, but this wasn't for long. The prosecutor brought forth a couple witnesses to show some of the lists Keith went through to cover his tracks. First, the police intercepted a new phone and number Keith tried to send to Valeria so they would be able to talk without anyone listening. Then they played a recording of a wiretap phone call with him trying to buy airline tickets to Havana, Cuba, then Canada. Now, if that wasn't enough, the prosecutor brought forth evidence that showed prior to the murder, Keith approached his own brother, Vic Smith, and asked him if he would help kill Jacqueline because she was talking about getting a divorce. With all that evidence, his fate was sealed.
After the jurors deliberated for about five hours over a two-day period, Keith Smith was found guilty of first-degree murder and a weapon charge and was sentenced to life in prison plus an additional three years. It was stated that once the sentence had been handed down, the only thing the people in the court could hear him say was, I'm sorry. Now, just four days after her father had been sentenced, Valeria, who had pleaded guilty to an accessory charge, was back in court for her sentencing. Her and her team thought that she was just going to get a slap on her wrist and be set free. But the judge decided to hold her to the terms of a plea agreement, and she was sentenced to 10 years in prison with all but five years suspended, and also ordered her to serve three years probation. And that, my friends, will bring this bizarre plot twist to an end. Do y'all remember hearing about this story? I mean, this man really convinced the whole country that these two homeless people killed his wife, but in fact, it was him all alone. Now, I'll tell you one thing. After reading all these articles, a lot of people were up in arms when the truth finally came out. They stated that all these leaders and celebrities that criticized Baltimore never came out and apologized for what they said. In fact, they just dismissed the whole thing as if it never happened, causing a lot of more issues to Baltimore than it already had. But anyway, family, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And if you don't mind, go ahead and do your boy solid and hit that like button. I don't know what I got to do to get y'all to hit this like button. Hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. And until next time, stay mysterious, my friends.